Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Today we are finally doing another episode of Unboxing Boxes. In fact, this may be the first ever episode of Unboxing Boxes that has a part one and a part two because we've got four big boxes here with almost another dozen boxes behind me. And usually I only do about four to five boxes, so it does seem like we've got enough content here for two episodes. And I'm going to do things a bit differently this time. We're going to have a bit of a closer look at some of the products. So a bit of, uh, we'll be cutting to ahead of time when I actually test them out and then cutting back to the unboxing boxes part. So we'll see how that goes. It should be something different. Anyway, I've got um, I've got a big Noble chair, chair here, an AMG F1 edition type chair. I actually have three of them. We'll build one of them uh, for unboxing boxes, but I think I'll save this for part two. We might kick off part two with this chair. So I'm gonna move this out of the way. It's a very heavy box. I don't know how much it weighs, 40 kilos or something. So I'll move this aside and then we'll get into it. Okay, now that that's done, let's, uh, let's get into it. I think we'll start by getting this MSI box down from up here. And I do have my trusty knife somewhere. Here it is. Got the knife and we'll see what MSI has sent in this box for us. They didn't send this in for unboxing boxes. I just happened to have it uh, ready to open up. Uh, it looks as though it is mostly empty. But it does have a box in it. So we have the MSI Z690 Torpedo EKX. Now I think I did mention this board at one point. I think it was during the uh, more recent Z690 VRM thermal testing where we did look at the torpedo. Very good board. But if I remember correctly, it is a DDR5 board, DDR5 support. So I think it's DDR5 only. But I guess if you're buying a more premium board with uh, a mono block, which is actually this one doesn't have a mono block, I don't think. I think it's just a CPU block. Motherboard and mono block combo. Hmm. Not sure on that one. The motherboard hit. Let's just take it out and have a look quickly. We won't spend too long on this because I'll feature this in some other content where we'll have an in-depth look at it, a test. Um, typically, mono blocks replace the heat sinks on the motherboard, which makes them different to a regular CPU block. Oh, I see. So it attaches. They've made some. I believe it. Yeah. Okay. It, it assists the existing VRM heat sinks. So there'll be some sort of contact there, perhaps made with thermal pads. These that, we'll have a quick look at the block. But yeah, I'll definitely test this board out, give it a spin and we'll see how it performs with CPU and uh, VRM cooling. But so basically this portion of the block there connects to the existing heat sinks and sort of assists them in extracting heat from the MOSFETs or the power stages. Uh, Ah, here you go. And there we have two thick thermal pads that will go there and there. So yeah, a modified MSI torpedo motherboard. Not sure why the torpedo, but yeah, pretty cool looking board. The sort of bluish looking anodized heat sinks. And then this guy would fit, it's an RGB block, but that would fit up in there like that. I'll put this back together and we'll move on. So that's one of the big MSI boxes out of the way. We do have another one back here, but we'll get to that later. There's product. I'll move this actually down. It's great having a lot of room now. This desk is about two and a half meters long by a meter wide. Uh, it would not have fit in the old studio, which is why I stopped doing unboxing boxes because I ran out of room for all the boxes. But anyway, this is great. And it's nice and strong because this is a 40, 40 kilo box. <sighs> Yep, there we go. That's as far as we'll move it. It's been like one box and I've, I've put my knife somewhere and now I, I, I don't know what I did with it. Why must I lose everything? If it's in view of the camera, that would be embarrassing. Apparently I put it on top of the motherboard box. Anyway, <laughs> moving along, let's just take this out. Uh... Okay, so we're, we're nudging closer to getting this thing out of the box. Portable power station, 2000 watts, 2000 watt hours. Sounds pretty cool. Anyway, we'll, we'll get it out of the box eventually. Well, very cool. It, um, 
It looks like a little esky. It feels like it's full, filled with lead, but yeah. So what we have here is the Blue Eddy AC200P portable power station. It's basically, think of it as like a giant power brick that's a caravaner's full drive camper's dream. You take this thing off grid with you and it's powerful enough to run stuff like fridges, microwaves, electric cookers, and really the list just goes on. Now, that's all really good, but I don't really go camping anymore. I don't have a caravan and I'm not that much into four-wheel driving or any other off-grid activities. You could say, I like my office. Still, I do have quite a few plans for this thing and we will get to that in a moment. And before we do, I probably should just talk a little bit about it. We won't go too in depth, I won't bore you with all the specs, but this power station uses lithium ion technology to deliver 2000 watts of power with a 2000 watt hour capacity. Blue Eddy claims, for example, the AC200P will be able to charge a laptop 26 times, run a chest freezer for 29 hours, an electric drill for two hours, and a 2000 watt induction cooker for 40 minutes. Now, the power station is guaranteed to sustain at least 3,500 charges, and with the supplied power adapter, takes about five and a half to six hours to fully charge. Though, you can use a second adapter, which is really cool, and basically, that cuts the charge time in half. And Blue Eddy also sells solar arrays for charging the power station off-grid, which, again, is very cool. So the business side would be here. These are all the outputs. We've got our Australian 240 volt outputs there, two outlets there, uh, some USB stuff, quite a lot of USB, which is cool. USB type C, 60 watt, that's cool. Some three amp, 12 volt outputs. I could power uh, like my studio lights and stuff off that. 12 volt, 25 amp output. So that's probably for like camping car type related stuff. Okay, so we get an assortment of cables here for various different devices you would use them. You've got your standard sort of kettle cable, PC cable, mostly used for these days, uh, cigarette socket type thing, a lot of... And then these would be sort of, I suppose, probably those who do a lot of camping and four-wheel driving stuff. That's probably familiar to them. And this would be the power supply for charging it, which of course you can use this cable. Um, if you have a PC, you've probably got your own one, but then that would plug in to here and that would charge it up to 100%. So I wanna know what can this actually do? Like can we run a gaming PC off it? For how long can we do that? Uh, maybe I'll power the 1300 watt studio light off it and see how that works. A lot of cool things I wanna try out with this. So let's go do that and then we'll, we'll get back to unboxing. Okay, so this is an unexpected turn of events. I'm now in my backyard, about 200 meters from my office. And well, I've decided that this is now my office. See down there? That, that's my new office. Maybe you can see it better now, but yeah, that's, that's my new office. So I'm kind of happy about this. So we have the Blue Eti 2000 watt power station right here. My phone's on top. I have a mic for recording audio. By the way, sorry about the wind. I have a high-end gaming system, 12900K, 6800XT, so that should use a bit of power, and a 27-inch 144Hz 4K monitor. And spoiler alert, one of the Noble Chairs AMG Patronus Formula One branded chairs. So, let's get to it. Okay, so I'm sitting in my chair now, my new office chair. I'm going to push this power button. And that should turn the station on. And now if we go to AC and turn that on, that should enable our 240 volt outlets. Whoop. The monitor has life. Let's push the power button here. Oh, there we go. It's turning on. It is turning on. The RAM is lighting up. We have the MSI logo. This is all looking promising. So what do we got here? Let's go to data, uh, info, DC. Oh, sorry, that's, we want AC output, not DC. We're not using the DC at the moment. So at the moment, we are outputting 230 volts. 
and just 180 watts. So that is with the system at idle. It'll probably come down a little bit. Though we do have the monitor tied into that, so maybe it won't come down. Um, and there we are, Windows desktop. A little bit glary. I'll see what I can do about that. Okay, I'm not sure if you can see that, but I do have internet working from my mobile phone, which is charging on the Blue Eddy power station. So that's very cool. And I actually have a reasonable internet connection. So I'm going to try and play a game of Fortnite and see how we do from down in my backyard. It's pretty interesting. The desk isn't exactly level. You wouldn't want to put a spirit level on it. Uh, there's quite a bit of glare on the monitor, I will admit. And I forgot to bring a mouse pad. So not making excuses. <laughs> we'll see how we go. It's kind of weird being out here and not being able to hear anything around me. But I'd probably rather not hear the tiger snake that's possibly slithering up behind me. So we'll just focus on the Fortnite. And hopefully you can see that the game is, is loaded. We are currently at, let's have a look here. So we're currently outputting 370 watts. So not too bad. We're in the game menu. If I let go of my mouse, it does start to slide down the hill. And so far, we're at 98% uh, battery capacity. So we haven't used much yet. So it's still using around 370 watts. But based on what I'm seeing here, it looks like you could be out here for quite a few hours. Possibly, I mean, it's hard to say based on what the information we're getting now, but mathematically it makes sense that it could be about four hours of gameplay at the current draw. So back in the studio now, got to say that was a lot of fun, very interesting gaming session. After about two hours of gaming, actually it was pretty much dead on two hours of gaming, the power station had 54% charge remaining, so you'd easily get a bit over three hours, somewhere between three to four hours when using a high-end gaming system, uh, plus I was also charging my phone along with powering the GH5 camera. So pretty impressive stuff. I plan on using this as a backup power source for in the office, the benchmark systems of my own PC for when we lose power, which does seem to happen quite a lot these days with the extreme weather and all that. I do plan on putting together an auto failover device for when the mains drops out, so maybe that's something for a future video. Anyway, so far I'm really impressed with the Blue Eddy AC200P. Okay, well, what to grab next? We'll probably just I don't know, we'll start here. I don't know what makes sense, but uh, we'll grab this. I, I don't actually know what's in a lot of these boxes. I took the labels off them a few weeks ago now, or well, some of them a few weeks ago, some of them a week ago. This seems very motherboard box shaped. It looks like it is indeed a motherboard. And this may actually answer a question that a lot of you have had for a while now. So this says Tomahawk B660. So, unless MSI is trolling me, the Tomahawk B660 motherboard. Hang on, I'll deal with this first. Missed. Uh, so I can use that for B-roll, which is nice. So do we have, yes, it looks like we do. We have the B660 Tomahawk motherboard from MSI. There we go. Looks very much like the Z690 version of this motherboard. Very uh, cool looking motherboard. And of course it is the B660 chipset, which a lot of you have been asking me, will we be doing a B660 VRM thermal test? And the answer to that is yes. So I've got in a few boards already. Um, been waiting on the MSI ones. But yeah, bought a few boards from ASRock, testing those at the moment, then you know, Gigabyte ASUS, the whole lot. So we'll have a pretty in-depth roundup there from the more affordable boards, the mid-range. Hopefully, hopefully like a week and a half, two weeks from now, I'll be able to get that content up on the channel. So it's just a matter of getting all the boards. It takes about a day to test each board. Uh, so there is a fair bit of, well, not necessarily work involved, but more uh, time to run all the tests. I'll be, 
I'll be testing it with like the Core i9 12900K, the Core i7 uh, 12700K, the 12700, and then the 12600K. And there'll be base sort of what used to be referred to as the TDP spec as well as unlimited sort of power testing. So yeah, I won't go over that board too much because you're going to see in-depth testing on this board on the channel, hopefully in the not too distant future. Now we have another MSI box here, so I might as well just get the, well, what I think is, I've actually got a lot of MSI stuff here. They've sent heaps over the last week. Uh, awesome, awesome, awesome. You guys are going to be happy to see this. Well, at least those of you who have been wanting the B660 testing to happen. So we've got the Pro B660MA Wi-Fi DDR4. So I believe that is the cheapest uh, B660 board that MSI will be selling in Australia. So that's the cheapest one I've been able to get my hands on. Typical looking budget board here from MSI. It's a micro ATX board. Some decent heat sinks. Looks like it may be a half decent VR on that board. So that's another one to test. And then we have the Bazooka. Always a popular budget board, the Bazooka. I've already tested the Mortar. It was phenomenally good, but it's like $20 cheaper than entry level Z690. So a bit too pricey maybe. But the Bazooka should come in a bit cheaper again uh, and, and fill that. That price range. It's got the cool little sort of like military green type heat sinks, which I suppose kind of goes with the name. Anyway, kind of cool looking board there. Uh, and another one to be tested out shortly. So that should do it for the B660 motherboards, I think. I think that's all of them. I don't know what we've got here. Uh, this is another mystery box. I think this was sent by PC Case Gear. So we have some of the Glorious Model D wireless gaming mice. So I think this is a new-ish model, maybe? I'm not super familiar with these, though I did have... I think I had the Model O. Was that the original wireless one? Uh, I purchased that myself. I needed a, a mouse for gaming. So I bought that, and I'll be honest, I wasn't very impressed with it. I bought two of them, one for me and one for a friend. Uh, sent him his. And both of us had really squeaky uh, mouse wheels and my wheel stopped clicking properly. Like it would click every second or third go. It was pretty unreliable on the, on the wheel clicking and I used that uh, for resetting edits in Fortnite. So that was annoying. It, half the time I couldn't reset stuff. But other than that, the accuracy of the mouse was just insane. At least it suited me really well, loved using it, apart from the, the mouse wheel just let it down. It was squeaky, like very loud squeaking, and I think that was a common problem or fairly common, and then the clicking. So there was a lot of issues there. I'm hoping this one's a lot better because I, I did love the other one. I just ended up ultimately disappointed with it because of, as I said, those issues with the mouse wheel. So I'm going to plug this in straight away. I'll probably game on it tonight and I'll use it for a bit and see how it goes. Hopefully I'll use it for a lot. Uh, the other one I think I used for maybe five months, four or five months, and then started running into the squeaky wheel issue and stuff. And apparently you can, you could fix it with Vaseline and stuff, but I'm like, yeah, I haven't got time for that. I've got a heap of other mice to test. So it kind of got a bit of a fail from me. So we'll see how those ones go. And we have... Yet another box to uh, open up and have a look at. It's quite heavy, this one. Oh, that's right. That is very heavy. The EK Quantum Vector FE. So that is a GPU water block. Actually, put it around the right way. And we also have one of their new Quantum Velocity CPU blocks. So very cool. EK obviously make awesome stuff. We've already taken a look at one EK CPU block, but this isn't a mono block like the last one was. Uh, this is just for the CPU. Yeah, really, really nice looking block there. So they probably go that way. That's how you'd orient it. And as you'd expect, a nickel plated base. And this is an interesting design. You do up, you, you attach it to the CPU, the CPU socket, you screw it in from the back of the motherboard. So that's that's a bit different. Very cool. And that the rear mount looks really nice. Not that you'll probably see that in many builds, but it does look good. And one important detail is this is an LGA 1700 block. So for those of you with your new Outer Lake CPUs, probably the K-skew parts, this would probably be of interest, especially if you've got an existing loop, you can just well attach this to it and away you go. So yeah, very, very neat looking water block there. Um, it's a shame I can't plug it in and see how it looks all lit up, but uh, I imagine it looks very, very cool. 
And then we have a very big GPU block, or at least it's a very big box. It's very heavy, very heavy indeed, but I believe this one does have a copper cold plate. Oh wow, that's cool. It's a bit more than just a block, really. It's a full, full uh, graphics card cooler type heatsink. So basically, the back comes off. You insert the PCB in there. You have to take off the rear I/O because you've got a, a new or a rear I/O bracket rather, because this one comes with one included. And you basically insert the PCB in there and then put the back on. That is very cool. GeForce RTX, very heavy. Very cool. And then the ports are in the back. So you'd loop it in that way. That's very cool. Or it comes with what I, looks like a pass through. So if you want to link multiple cards together, this would come out, that would go in like that. And you can link a series of cards together with the tubes running in and then coming through that way. So that's very cool. Don't know how many um, RTX 3090s you're going to put in your system, but if you're going to do one, this is a really, really cool way of going about it. Absolutely love this block. Hopefully I can do some kind of build with this in the not too distant future because yeah, too cool not to use basically. All right, next up we have a box that I, I, I have no idea what's in this to be honest. And I still have absolutely no idea what we're looking at here. Um, maybe it's just some paper. Oh, 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 very cool. I've been waiting for these for quite some time. I'd say most of you are probably familiar with the Myonix brand, but for those of you who aren't, they've been around for a very, very long time. Uh, when the Harbour Unboxed channel first started, like I think it was maybe six years ago now, we, we used to love their mice, look at them a lot. They sort of weren't that, like, I don't know if pulled out of the Australian market's the right word, but they weren't doing that much here. And now they're making a push back into the Australian market. So the Caster or Castor Pro, so this is the Pro version of that mouse. I had the original version. Again, that must have been five years ago, I want to say. Absolutely loved this mouse. Had a great feel to it. It was just a nice mouse to use. I used it for, I would say, a year. And then I had a friend who was in desperate need of a mouse because theirs broke. And I said, well, have this one. I'm going to try another mouse now. So I gave that away. I believe they're still using it to this day, but surely not. Uh, mice generally don't last that long, but I'll have to go and find out about that one. But anyway, they've got a new pro version so as you can probably gather it's not a wireless mouse so we have a it's a braided cable but it's very sort of rubberized and how uh i don't know what you'd say flexible it is feels exactly like how i remember just a really comfortable mouse damn i kind of want to use this as well i've got a few mice that i have to try out now and so the other mice we have is the avior pro not familiar with this one at all be completely honest and the Naos. So again, not familiar with this one, but we'll take them out, have a quick look at them. And again, these are some mice that I'm going to have to play around with at um, some point in time. One thing's for sure, I have no shortage of mice to uh, test out at the moment, which is always good. So again, these are all wired mice, same really nice flexible cable. This one has quite a, a wide grip on it. Not that dissimilar to the caster in terms of shape, maybe a bit longer, but yeah, certainly wider. You rest your pinky finger and stuff on it. I guess it seems like for someone who really grabs their mouse, this seems like that would be uh, more suited to them. I tend to just rest my hand, I guess. And this looks like it might be an ambidextrous mouse. So it doesn't matter if you're left or right handed, you would probably disable the buttons that you're not gonna use because otherwise you will be hitting them constantly. The design of these mice is fairly similar, I would say. I'd say the caster for me is probably going to be the most, the one that's best suited to me. And then if you're left-handed, this is the, the Avior is going to be probably worth a shot. And if you're someone who maybe has a bigger hand or likes to really grab and hold the mouse as you're gaming, this, this would probably be really comfortable and something you'd enjoy using. For me though, I think this is the mouse, the mouse for me. So I'm actually really keen to plug this in and start using it because it's been, I'd say four years since I've held well, this shape, very similar to this shape. So you're keen to give it a go. All right, and I think the last box that we're gonna open for this sort of part one will be the Fantex Evolve X case. I think, while this isn't a very new case, this is the white version. So we're gonna open that up, take a look at it, and that'll be a wrap for part one. 
Oh, I've done way too many heavy products in this episode. Okay. All right, let's have a look at what we got here. And I have it around the wrong way. Well, for those of you, oh, okay, so it does have a glass panel on the back, which is pretty cool. So that, um, that EK block that I was talking about earlier with the really nice back plate, you'll be able to see that in this case if you look at the other side. But wow, what a beauty. Hopefully the light's not reflecting too badly in this panel. Something right away I like about this case, and forgive me, I'm not actually familiar with this particular model because we don't do case reviews here at Harbour Unbox. We just play around with cases whenever we do builds or I need to build a new test system. Actually, new test systems is the main uh, way I look at cases. Anyway, you take the front panel off here, which just pulls out. Uh, it's got some LED strips which connect in down up here. So that's pretty cool the way that makes contact. But that just pops out. Um, so I think it goes in like that and then it's got two clips at the top just pops in like that so you pull it out from the top and then lift it up very easy and there's a pair of thumb screws which you know i imagine you don't have to put these in if you don't want to it's just for if you're moving the case around the doors don't go flying open which is a problem with hinge doors so i like that you have the ability there to lock the doors in place so they do clip in quite nicely but if you want to secure them, as I said, for when you're moving the case of the doors, they go flying open and smash in or something. That's that's a very nice option. The uh, cable management panels in the back are very cool. And the attention to detail is nuts. Like the cables are white, the cable connectors are white. Uh, I think the only things that are sort of black, it seems like they're deliberately meant to be black as a really cool contrast, like the, the screws and the thumb screws, they could have easily been white, but they've gone with black. And I think it looks cool having having those as black. And of course, some a lot of the components you'll put in here will have sort of black things on them. So I think that, that black and white contrast is very cool. Like for example, the rubber grommets around the back here, it's actually not too heavy. Um, I reckon that looks cool. So imagine they're for mounting two and a half inch drives. And the way they've hidden these LED light strips in the front panel, very clever, I like that. Uh, this is, as I said, easy to remove. In the front here, we have a really, so that's magnetically connected, a really nice uh, dust filter. So that would just snap back into place, I imagine. Yep, that's cool. And then this, you just pop in like that. This isn't magnets, but this is just two clips at the top. They press in, holds that in nicely. Now, if you, do you have to pull on this? Well, oh, okay, you push that up, right. That's cool. So there's your front IO. So USB type C, two type A's, uh, audio stuff. And it looks like we have something to cycle lighting and possibly a reset button. And the power button's up the top in the middle. But wow, this is a case that looks mighty impressive from all angles. It really does look impressive from all angles. Even the back manages to look cool on this thing. Very nice case. See, I'm not sure what build I'm gonna do in this case, but I feel like I'm gonna to have to do something at some point, or Tim will have to, one of us. Be a really neat looking case, this one. Okay, so I'm gonna pause the unboxing boxes here. Uh, I believe this episode will have gone for quite a while, so hopefully you enjoyed it. Uh, it's not, as I said, it's not going to be anything technical or whatever, it's just a series we do from time to time where we show you guys what we've got coming in, what we may be doing, and maybe just show off some products that we wouldn't normally look at on the channel, like the, uh, the generator, that's cool. And yeah, we wouldn't have looked at it otherwise, because as I said, we don't do sponsored videos and it's not, it doesn't fall within uh, the usual stuff we look at, it's more... The B660 mother was, for example, that's more within our wheelhouse. So yeah, part one done. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, make sure you subscribe because part two will be coming up in the next little bit. Uh, I've got some gigantic MSI product there. FedEx box, I honestly have no idea what's in that. Another unknown box and then another one as well. So yeah. Plenty of stuff to look at there. And of course we have the Noble Chair. I'll probably kick off part two by putting that thing together. 
and it won't be for this set because I'd be down here, but it will be for the regular set that Tim and I do Q and A's from. I've got three of them, as I said, so they'll be sort of put throughout the office. So very cool stuff there, looking forward to it. And thanks for watching. I'm your host, Steve. I'll see you again next time.